Hi everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make a podcast using just your iPhone and either the earbuds that came with your iPhone or possibly a slight upgrade. This is a Turtle Beach headset that I usually use. And then this is a Shure microphone. But I'm gonna take you through everything from editing to just the logistics of recording. This is for people who are not techies. They have something to say and they wanna start a podcast. Okay, now if you're just starting out and you don't wanna spend any money, it is possible to record your first few episodes using the earbuds with the built-in mic that you use just to chat on your iPhone. These do have a pretty decent sound quality. However, I will warn you that if you're kind of fidgety, these can pick up kind of a rubbing sound against your clothing. You can kind of hear that rattling sound in the recording. So if you do use these, I caution you to remain very, very still. Another thing that probably came with your iPhone is this little adapter. This allows you to use other types of microphones that don't necessarily have the little lightning plug. So with a headset like this, having this boom arm eliminates the problem of the microphone picking up a lot of sounds around you. Obviously, you still need to record in a really quiet environment, but it's going to amplify the sound from your mouth above other sounds, whereas if the microphone were down here, it's just picking up everything. So with this Turtle Beach gaming headset that someone in a podcast group recommended, I just plug in the little adapter so that I can plug this into my phone. Right now, there is some background sound. Since this is a video, I'm not that worried about it. I'm not that worried that the fan is on or that my husband's sitting next to me and might get a notification on his phone because this is kind of a visual thing. But because podcasts are audio-based, it can be really distracting and off-putting to hear anything other than the person's voice. And obviously I'm not perfect. Sometimes there are some minor bloopers, but the two places that I like to record are either in my car or in my walk-in closet. I will tape my outline to my steering wheel so that I can just look at it without touching it. When I first started podcasting, it was really important for me to use a free app. I, I just couldn't stomach the thought of paying to do something that I was doing to try to make money. So I went with Anchor. I did appreciate the fact that Anchor was free. A few months into using Anchor as my host, they started offering monetization services. So that was kind of exciting. And I, I started making a few cents a day and I actually got to the point as my podcast grew that I was averaging about $500 a month in income through the ads that they kind of hooked me up with through their program. The problem was that these sponsorships would end. Sometimes they would end when they got to a certain monetary level or a certain time period, and Anchor wouldn't even tell you, they wouldn't or couldn't tell you how long a sponsorship would last. And then if it ended, they'd be like, they'd send you an email, we're working hard to find you a new sponsor, but you had no idea if that was gonna take two weeks, two months, you had no idea. During kind of my second year of podcasting, I think my show was growing enough to where they weren't yanking my sponsors as often. For almost an entire year, I had two sponsors and that was Anchor and Spotify, which Spotify bought out Anchor, so it's kind of the same company, but I had those two ads. They were host read ads that I read and then at the click of a button basically inserted them into my episodes so it was a good thing and then all good things come to an end it ended and I always felt like when I would email support or whatever they were polite but it was kind of like well you know we we don't guarantee you to have a sponsor at all times or concentrate on growing your show and I'm thinking like my show's growing pretty fast like you know there's a guy that's kind of like a podcast guru Dave Jackson and he always says like free is not a good business model. He doesn't recommend Anchor as a podcast host for that reason. 
yeah, I started kind of wondering like, maybe I should just be paying for a service. What I ended up doing is switching to Spreaker. After almost two years with Anchor, I switched to Spreaker. And there's already been people who've made videos about that if you're wanting to switch from one host to another. But this episode is just how to get started, how to edit, how to, you know, how to produce a podcast. So that's beyond the scope of this video. But I ended up switching to Spreaker and I'm paying $20 a month, which I feel is well worth it. I'm making more than that through their monetization program. So it's not like I'm really paying that out of pocket. I'm not losing any money. But since I am a paying customer, I feel like the sponsorships aren't just going to end. And I don't think they are. Because it's more like these radio style commercials. Instead of a host read ad, there are just these commercials that come on like some guy telling you to shop at Circle K or whatever, like what you would hear on the radio, very professional. They come on and you make money when people hear those ads. So I'm really liking that. Now, if you listen to my podcast, Clean With Me, you might notice that I do still do host read ads, but I'll, I'll get to that later, but that's something separate. Um, some people don't want to admit that they're into podcasting to make money. And obviously there are secondary reasons why you do a job. Like for example, if you were going to be a nurse, you might say, I want to help people, but that doesn't mean you don't want to make money at the same time. That's kind of how I am with podcasting. I created my podcast because I thought it would be helpful to others, but of course I want to get paid for what I do. And I'm not ashamed of that. So if you're like me and you want to make money podcasting, I do recommend that you pick a host that does have a monetization feature so that you're not having to just go after sponsors. Yes, I do get sponsors outside of my podcast host, Spreaker, but start out with something that has that onboard advertising and the Spreaker is the easiest one. Like I feel the $20 a month in hindsight, I would have started with Spreaker. I feel like the $20 a month is just well worth it to have that monetization from the get-go. And if you're, if you're thinking like, I'm never going to get popular enough to cover that $20 a month, then don't start a podcast. Remember I said I was using kind of the built-in monetization feature that's available through Spreaker on the plan that I'm on, the, the Spreaker does have a free plan if you want to start out free, but you won't be able to monetize until you upgrade to one of the paid plans. So if you want to start out free, start with their free plan and then you can always upgrade. And one of the things you get with the upgrade is the monetization. But aside from those commercials that they'll put in for you, remember I was talking about host read ads? One way to get host read ad gigs is to sign up with a company called Podcorn. Go to podcorn.com to do that. Or if you just get a, a large audience, basically people are going to contact you about sponsorships in, in your niche. So now that you've thought about which podcast host you're going to go with, and, and maybe you're not going with Spreaker like I am, you're going with another one, that's fine. Um, you're still going to find this video super useful. So once you decide on your host, where you're going to record, what you're going to record, you have an outline or whatever, once you figure all that out, you're going to want to decide how you're going to edit your podcast. And oftentimes the host has a way of editing. You can talk directly into Spreaker and go ahead and edit it there. But I... I, I like to record into a different app, edit it, and then upload that completed file. And the app that I use to record into is called Ferrite. And I use the paid version of it. I think when I bought it, it was a one-time purchase. It was like $29.99 or something to get the paid version. And I really like it. I'm gonna show you how to use it in this video. But some of the tips I'm showing you might apply to other editors as well. My process is, of course, you just plug in whatever you're using for a mic and record. But here's my editing process. The first thing I do is I click on my pre-recorded intro. Okay. And the sound quality is not going to be that great here, but because I'm just kind of playing it out loud. But I'll give you an idea what Hi that everyone, is. Hi, everyone. Ronnie here. You're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where I talk you through 
cleaning your house. And you don't have to have music, don't panic. You don't have to have that when you first start out. I created that intro back when I was using Anchor. They had a feature where you could put an interlude in the background. So that's kind of how I made that clip. But that's my standard intro. So my process is that I will click this button. Okay, and then I'll click this plus sign. This is the paid version of Ferrite. Then I'll tap right there and hit import. And I made just kind of a, I made a couple fake recordings just to show you how I pieced together an episode. So let's say that I recorded two different pieces. I'll put that one there, but I want it to kind of overlap because I want my intro to fade into the beginning of my episode. So let me show you what that's like. There's my intro, but notice how Hi, I have everyone. this fading. You're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where I talk you through cleaning your house. Thanks for joining me. This is episode 122. And in today's episode, as usual, I'm going to talk you through cleaning your entire house. We're also going to be discussing... Okay, so let's say that there's another clip I mentioned. So then the other one, and see, it's kind of like stair steps how I add them on. So the other one is right here. And then see, there's kind of some dead space there. So I might just kind of slide that to get rid of the dead space and then click that on there. You don't want to overlap just talking with talking. I just do that with the intro. And then I'm going to edit something out because that's one of the most important things you need to know is how to cut something out. Marriage problems related to house cleaning. So, um, uh, uh. Okay. So let's say I wanted to edit right after so. And you can also stretch this to make it a little bit bigger. I didn't mean to disconnect that there, but. Okay. So. Okay. See how there's a space right between the black chunk and the next black chunk? That's after I said so. So you can kind of visually see where one word ends and another one begins. I tap that and I hit split. And then I keep playing the part I want to um, take out. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Um, the first thing you're going to, the first thing you're going to want to do, the first thing you're, so I think where I just say the first thing you're going to want to do starts here after all my hesitations. So I'm going to hit split there. I'm going to tap below. I'm going to tap right here. That's the section where I was hemming and hawing that I don't want to include. So I'm going to tap that. I'm going to hit delete. Then I'm going to hit ripple delete. Now what's important about ripple delete is when I have all these other sections, I don't want it to leave a gap where I cut something out. So it kind of just pieces it all back together, cutting out just what I wanted to take out. This is an important thing too. One of the features I love about ferrite, I'll go back into the project and I'll hit final mix and I'll go to auto leveling and I'll hit regular. And then I'll go ahead and save it again down here. Now what that auto leveling does is if I had some quiet sections or some really loud sections, it just kind of evens it out because I don't want people to I don't want people to have to turn their volume up or down while listening to me. So that's what the auto leveling is. And then I'll go ahead and save this file and I'll upload this. This is the app for the Spreaker Recording Studio. And you can record right from it or you can import. So I would just, let's say that the file that I was uploading was this one. I would click here and then it would import, okay? And then later it's gonna get, once it's done, it's gonna give me the option to, um, it'll give me the option to like title the episode and stuff like that. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, that's my process. That's how I do my podcast, super easy. Maybe you're some techie that thinks you can do it better, but I've seen a lot of growth with my podcast just doing it all on my phone.